Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and today we're going to take a look at the Chickahoto and Beautylish collaboration. This is called the Sakura Collection. So we're going to go through all five brushes that are included in this set as well as some comparisons. I've got demos. First, let's start off with how everything arrives and it does come in a box. The box has a black ribbon around it. At this point, I've already opened everything. I've been using it for a few days. So I will have a reel. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'm at Alexis Jong on there or TikTok at Lexi Jong. And you can kind of see how it looked when it arrived. So this here is the case. So this set does come with a brush case and it's a uh, vegan leather. You do have a nice gold chain pull here and it's a little bit, you know, it's like a thicker, it's a nice quality chain. So zippered pouch and then inside, see I have not used mine. It does come with tissue paper here. And inside you have a spot for all of the brushes. This is for your powder and cheek brush. And then you have three compartments here for your eye brushes. And the powder and cheek brushes do have the flaps. So that way you can prevent contamination if you have you know, dirty brushes that are going back in. Both sides on the bottom have you know the plastic here as well. So you're not getting the actual like vinyl material inside dirty either but regardless, this is easy to wipe clean. And the back of the pouch does have a flap here. So you could, you know, store something in here. If you're not taking a lot of makeup and you're traveling, you could easily store like an eyeshadow palette, a blush palette or something in here. So it's all in one. You could use this, you know, if you wanted to, you could use it as a little like clutch or something as well. So this is the case. Let's move on to the brushes. All right, so this here is the powder brush in the set. All five of these brushes are made with Psycho goat hair. So that is going to be what most of the Sonia G brushes are made out of. So if you're familiar with the Sonia G brushes, this is like the same quality hair of, for example, like a lot in the Pro and the Sky series, the undyed hairs. So you can see that our handle here is gorgeous. We've got a lacquered maple wood here with a Maki design. And we have these aluminum ferrules that are more of a champagne gold shade. So overall, everything's gorgeous. It does say Chickahoto Beautylish on here. So this is a round flat brush. As such, you know, you're gonna really get a nice back and forth movement. You can kind of swirl it, but because it is more of a pinched ferrule here, it is going to move more easily back and forth. And you can see that the size of the brush is, it's a good balance. You know, if you like a large cheek brush, this will work for that, but it also works. It's small enough to get under the eyes around smaller areas. Let's take a look at a demo while we discuss some of the details. So according to Beautylish, they say the soft rounded edge sweeps over your face's curves without disturbing product underneath. It has a total length of six and a half inches and a bristle length of two inches. And again, it is gonna be kind of that round flat. And you can see in the demo here, I'm showing you how the brush performs up close, but then also, you know, a little bit further back so you can really, you know, see the whole picture. Overall, I think it's a very nice powder brush. Most of my large powder brushes are actually going to be of a different fiber. So it's really nice having some that are an undyed goat hair. Now Beautylish technically recommends these for powder products, but undyed goat hair like this Psycho goat hair can be used for liquids, creams, powders, you know, so it's really versatile. And this is really great for people who are trying to put powder on top of a foundation that's already damp, or if you've got oily skin, you know, you don't have to worry about using some delicate hairs like squirrel hair. So I really like that. I think this is a nice shape and size. And let's move into my comparisons. I actually don't have too many. I do not have an exact dupe of this brush. I wanted to start off with another one of the Beautylish brushes. So you can see this is the one from the Lunar New Year. This is the Year of the Rabbit brush. And you can see that this ferrule, although technically oval, is mostly round compared to the Sakura, which you can see is gonna be a little bit more pinched. It's more flat. Okay, so you can see the different dimensions here. You can also see that the Sakura Collection one is just ever so slightly longer than the Lunar New Year. And our curvature is gonna be a little different. So 
you can see that this is going to be rounded, got more of a flat top, whereas this is going to be more completely arced, more like a rainbow. Next up, we have this brush from Giorgio Armani. Now, this is technically their cheek brush, and it's a mix of goat hair and synthetic fiber. So this is not, you know, 100% natural. And you can actually get this for a great price. I forget what it comes down to. Uh, but when they do those sales on the Armani website where it's like 40% off, you know, off of their classics, this brush is typically included in there. And you can see that the length of the hairs is gonna be about the same. We have a pinch ferrule on both. The Armani is gonna be a little bit thinner. We don't have quite as much hair there. And you can see it's gonna be more squared off at the top. Now, this one here is actually my closest brush. This is the Chickahoto F01. This one is silver fox hair. So you don't wanna use this with liquids or creams. And you can see this is gonna be a little bit smaller. And it's also a little bit thicker in diameter here. It's not quite as pinched as the Sakura collection. However, our shape is going to be about the same. Moving on to the cheek brush, you can see I have already used mine today. You'll see that in the demo in just a minute. But again, we do have kind of that flat round shape with the pinched ferrule. So it's gonna work really well going back and forth. It does have a bit more wispiness than the powder brush. So the swirling motion is a little bit more effective here. Still not quite as effective as it would be with a, round, a more round ferrule. Let's move on to the demo. Now, this cheek brush is designed to bring out the best in your blush, bronzer, and highlighter. So you can definitely use this for blush or bronzer. Because this is a flat round shape, you can either use the larger section or you could use the side of this to get into those more narrow crevices. It works very well that way. Now, with this demo, I'm only showing you the blush because I did want to utilize a different brush for highlight just to show you another use for one of the eye brushes. So this particular cheek brush has a total length of 5.75 inches and a bristle length of 1.25 inches. Let's take a look at my comparisons. So I don't have a ton of cheek brush comparisons either because I do typically tend to prefer more rounded ferrules for my cheek brushes. This one here is the Peony brush. This was limited edition from iHoto. And you can see here that we do have a similar shape. However, the Ihoto is going to be wider. You know, you've got a little bit thicker diameter here and it's going to be wider all the way around. You can see just here, it edges out just a little bit on the side there and it's a little bit longer. So overall, this is going to be larger, but it does have kind of the same shape here. So we get a little bit more flat at the top. We've got those rounded edges here. And again, this works really well this way, but because it is wispy, it also will do a swirly motion well. Now, this one here is probably my closest. This is the Chickahoto Chocolat Collection brush. And I have to double check, but I think this one here is Pine Squirrel. And you can see that our shape is pretty much exactly the same. This is going to be a little bit wider here, but other than that, it's the same. And last up, we have the Cheek Pro from Sonia G. So this is also going to be a pinched ferrule design, flat round. However, you can see that our bristles are gonna be much shorter. This is going to give it a slightly, you know, it's a little bit bushier that way because we are pinching a larger quantity of bristles here and they're a little bit shorter. So instead of, you know, being able to remain all together in a longer pattern, they kind of splay out a little bit more. And you can see that this is going to be just ever so slightly thicker than the Sakura. So pretty close. You can see that the shape on these is going to be the same. Moving on to the eye brushes, we actually have two different crease brushes and a shader brush here. So this is going to be our wispier crease brush. This does come to a stronger point here. You can see you've got that candle shape and this is going to be great for getting into small areas because it does come to this nice point here. You can really get into the inner corner well. You can get into like a tighter crease very well. It's very, very effective. And you can also use this style on the eye for blending. So if you're using the side of the brush here, you can go back and forth to kind of blend some colors together if you so choose. So this brush, I also like for highlights. So let me show you the demo of that. 
Now, according to Beautylish, this is designed to blend color into smaller areas like the crease of your eye. We have 5.25 inches of total length and 0.75 inches for the bristles. And again, I think this performs really well for small areas. It works underneath the eye if you're trying to powder on top of concealer. It works across the lid for blending. It works in the inner corner. It works for highlight. It works on the brow bone. So overall, I think this is a very versatile brush. I really like this one. And I don't have a lot of comparisons, but the first ones that made me think of are the Surat brushes. So these are gonna be squirrel hair. They're softer, you know, um, but look, we do have a very similar shape. Now this is the Moyen or medium brush from Surat and this is the petite or small. And you can see that the Chikahoto Beautylish one falls kind of right in the middle. It's a little bit closer in size to the petite, but you know, it's still pretty much in the middle. And you know, all of these are going to perform really well. The squirrel hair, you can see, makes it super, super wispy because it is going to be a softer fiber. But you can see we have just a little bit more strength and support here in the base of the goat hair because the goat hair fiber is going to be a little bit firmer, which allows it to be just a little bit more versatile than the Surat brushes. Now my last comparison with this crease brush, this is the Omnia Gold Small Crease Brush, and you can see we don't come to as much of a point here. This is kind of like a smaller truncated version here because we don't extend all the way up. And it is gonna be a little bit smaller in diameter, but you can see that it's still going to be fairly similar. Let's take a look at the other two eye brushes and then we'll move into the eye demos where you can see all three of the brushes on the eye. This is our shader brush. I love shader style brushes. This one here is a little bit longer than those that I use most of the time. This is great for back and forth motion. You can use this again with liquids, creams, powders. You know, I find it very versatile. It's great for all over the lid. And then this is our more traditional crease brush. And you can see that it does kind of your you know, swirling motion very well. You can go back and forth. This is gonna be a larger crease, so this would be the one you would wanna use first to kind of lay down like a base color. And overall, these are very effective brushes. Let's look at the eye demos and talk about some details. So according to Beautylish, the shader brush has dense bristles that effortlessly shade, build, and blend eyeshadow. We have a total length of five inches and a bristle length of 0.5 inches. Now this other brush, which I also termed as a crease brush, is technically the blender brush from this collection here. And this is described as having a tapered silhouette. If it's perfectly into the crease of any eye shape, the flat edge lays down pigment while blending product with a soft feather light touch. It's a total length of 5.25 inches and a bristle length of 0.75 inches. Now, if I haven't mentioned this already, the set retails for 215 US dollars. And again, you get all five of these brushes and the case. Unfortunately, none of these are being sold individually. So the brushes you can only purchase as a set and it is a limited edition set. So let's take a look at some comparisons for the eye brushes. We're gonna start off with my closest comparison. That's actually this Chantecaille brush here. This is called the Shade and Sweep from Chantecaille. And this is synthetic. So you can see here that our shape and our size is going to be almost identical. So the Chantecaille is perhaps just a little bit more flat at the top. We have a little bit more rounding on the Chikahoto but they're both gonna be very, very close. And you can see our diameter is gonna be about the same and everything. So the, this is my closest match. Next, we have the Chikahoto T7. And you can see this is gonna be more of a flat top brush. And if you look, you can see that this, the bristles are gonna fan out a bit more. We're not coming in tapered. And that's because of the way the shader bristles are cut here. So these are pretty much all going up to the top. I'm sorry, they're not actually cut. Fude brushes, they're actually placed by hand to get the level and placement that you want for these. And you can see here that the Chikahoto, we have some you know, smaller, longer, longer, all the way up to the top, it's a gradation. Whereas this, they're pretty much all the same. So this is going to give you like a fluffier brush for the T7, whereas we're, we've got a little bit more control, it's a little bit more pressed together, with the Sakura collection. 
This one here is the Hakahodo J5523. And again, similar to the one we just looked at, the T7, you know, this is going to go, most of these bristles go all the way up to the top. However, you can see this is gonna be a little bit more narrow. We've got the same rounding that we have on the Sakura brush. However, our gradation on the Sakura is gonna start kind of like right down here. Whereas on this, it's starting closer up to the top and we're not, we don't have quite as many hairs with different lengths as we do with this. So this will still make this one a little bit fluffier than the Sakura collection. And last up, I wanted to compare two of the Sonia G brushes that I figure a lot of people probably have these. This is my favorite, the Soft Shader, and this is the Worker Pro. You can see that the Worker Pro is a little bit longer than the Soft Shader, and it's a little bit more narrow, but we do have a similar shape. The Sakura is going to be a little bit longer than both of these, and we do still have a similar shape with these. However, the Sakura is going to be a little bit wider as well going this way. So you can see also that the Worker Pro and the Soft Shader, these are both going to be a little bit thicker compared to the Sakura. Moving on to the blender brush here, you can see that again, we're gonna have kind of this tapered appearance here as well. In this case, we're starting to taper right about here. And this will do a nice swirling motion. You can also go back and forth with this, but notice that you do have a little bit of stiffness in the base. So you have a little bit of structure. It can give you a little bit more control and so forth, but you still have a very wispy top. It's not gonna be as wispy as something like squirrel hair. That's gonna be a little bit floppier for lack of a better word. Uh, but let's take a look at some comparisons. First up, we have the Hakahodo B142, and you can see that we do have a very similar size and shape. These both have a rounded ferrule. The difference here is our B142. We are starting our gradation here, and we're pretty much going to a point, whereas over on the Sakura collection, we still have a rounded ferrule, but you can see that our point is not gonna be quite as pronounced and our gradations a little bit more gradual, so it's a little bit more rounded. Next, I want to take a look at a couple refer brushes, and this is the 14 and the 15 here, and you can see that size-wise, we are closer to the 15 in size, but we're still kind of not quite as large as that. Now look at the shape of the two refer brushes. You can see that our roundedness is really starting right near the top, so this is gonna be pretty straight for the most part with a bit of a rounded top. Whereas here, again, we've got more of that taper, so you end up with more of a point at the top of it. Size-wise, again, it's gonna be closer to the 15. You can see the diameter of our ferrules is almost the same. And let's look at another one. This one here is the Refer 27. And this is one of my favorite crease brushes. You can see here that the Refer 27 bristles are just a little bit longer than the Sakura collection. And we do have kind of this point up here. It's kind of like a flattened point. And we have kind of a steep grade going up the sides. Whereas here on the Beautylish and uh, Chikahoto brush, it's definitely gonna be a lot more gradual. It's more rounded overall. Thickness of the ferrule, we actually have a little bit, it's a little bit thicker here on the Chikahoto brush, whereas this is just gonna be a little bit tighter. It allows the bristles to splay out a little bit more. So you're gonna have a little bit more control here with the Chikahoto and Beautylish compared to the refer. And just a couple more. This is the Sonia G Crease Pro. You can see this is gonna be a little bit smaller. Shape-wise, we're looking at a very similar shape. We have a slightly more exaggerated angle here on the Crease Pro compared to the Chikahoto, but they're very close. Overall, the Crease Pro is just slightly smaller, and you can see we do have plenty of control with the Crease Pro. Because it is a little bit shorter, we actually have a little bit more control. You don't have that wispy top that you have here on the Chikahoto. So that's gonna be your main difference with that one. But let's also take a look at the classic crease from Sonia G. And you can see this one's really gonna be more of a flat top, a little bit rounded edge. This is gonna be more like the refer 15 and 14 in shape. 
Size wise, you can see that these are going to be pretty equivalent. Our Chickahoto bristles go just a very, very tiny bit longer right at the peak, but overall our diameter and everything is gonna be about the same. This is gonna be dyed goat hair, so powders only. And you can see the movement of this compared to this one. We have slightly more control. There's a little bit more bounce back from the uh, fibers here in the undyed goat hair versus the dyed goat hair. So this will make it a little bit softer, a uh, little bit wispier in comparison, but they're gonna be pretty close. So this will give you a little bit more control. So overall, my thoughts on this set, it retails for 215 US dollars. We're looking at five brushes all made with a maki handle. You've got the Psycho goat hair. I would have to say that this is actually a good price for the set. You've got five fully functional brushes. You know, you don't have any of those brushes, you know, in, included in the set that you sometimes get, but you don't really want like a, an unnecessary like brow brush or lip brush or something. You know, you've got five brushes that you can really do pretty much everything with. They are high quality goat hair. It's very versatile being undyed and you know, the handles, I mean, <laughs> they're just so stunning. And I would have to say that I think this is a really great set. So all in all, I have to say that I do recommend this set. I think it is a decent price considering you're getting five brushes and a case. You know, the brushes are very versatile. They are stunning. This will make a great gift for somebody as well. And I do wanna make a note that, uh, you know, Beautylish has just recently put out a thing saying that their spring gift card event is coming soon. So right now these are available. I don't know if they'll still be available during the gift card event, but you know, if you're kind of on the fence and you're not sure whether you wanna get these or not, that might be a way to decide, you know, sometimes I do that where it's like, well, if it goes on sale, then I'll get it. So, you know, just something to note that that gift card event is coming up soon. I am thinking of picking up one of these for my friend's birthday. So I think this set is that gorgeous. So if you are new to food day and you're looking for a nice set to start with, these are a really great set because you've got, you know, not only aesthetically pleasing brushes, but they're very versatile, being able to be used with pretty much anything. If you already have an extensive collection, perhaps you just wanna look at the handles. You know, are these brushes going to be necessary for people who already have a lot of brushes? Definitely not, but they are definitely a beautiful addition. And if you're like me and you can't really resist cherry blossoms, uh, you know, I think it is definitely something nice. So I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know what you think of these brushes. And if you've already picked these up, please let me know what your thoughts are after trying them. And thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful day.